Hey, my name is Devin and welcome to All Things Food, a culinary journal. On today's episode, I'll be making some soft, pillowy potato gnocchi. Now, gnocchi is one of those foods that has a squillion different methods on how to create them. But this is my little take on the classic North Italian dish. So if you're ready, sit back, relax, and let's get cooking. Let's start by filling a pot of cold water for our potatoes. On the subject of potatoes, the gold standard when it comes to gnocchi is to use a floury potato, like a russet, Yukon Gold, or a King Edward. These varieties are a little difficult to get here in the Netherlands, but it might be easy to find in your location. Add the potatoes to the pot. Season well with salt and set the heat on high. Boil the potatoes until tender, which should take around 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the size of your potatoes. Check the potatoes with a knife to test for tenderness. Once done, remove them and allow them to cool just enough so you don't burn yourself while handling them. Next. Start peeling off the skin of the boiled potatoes as we don't really need this for the gnocchi. To cook the gnocchi, we'll need another pot of boiling water. So let's start this before we begin processing the potatoes. In order to get a consistent texture through the gnocchi, most people will use a ricer or a food mill. I unfortunately don't have any of these, so I'll be using a common flour sieve and a large spoon to pass the potatoes through. Place the sieve over a large bowl, and with your spoon, gently press the boiled potatoes through the sieve. If the potatoes are too big, break them into smaller pieces before passing them. As the potatoes pass through the sieve, you'll get a fluffy, snow-like consistency in the bowl. Once you're done passing the potatoes, use your spoon to scrape every little bit of that potato goodness from the back of the sieve. Now, in a little bowl, crack one egg. And mix it thoroughly. Now add your beaten egg to the fluffy potatoes. Add 100 grams of flour, some salt, and some cracked black pepper. Use a fork to slowly combine all the ingredients evenly, making sure not to overwork the mixture. If the mixture seems too wet, sprinkle in just a little more flour. Lightly flour your work surface and empty out the fluffy potato mixture. Now we're going to gently mix and knead all the potato snow until the mixture comes together and begins to form a soft pillowy potato dough. Using a knife, or in my case a dough scraper, Slice a portion off the loaf. Now using both hands, gently begin to roll the slice out into a thick rope about two and a half centimeters or one inch in diameter. Using a knife or a dough scraper again, begin to cut the rope into roughly two and a half centimeter or one inch bite sized pieces. These should resemble tiny, soft little pillows. Lightly dust the pieces with flour to prevent them from sticking to each other. Set aside the lightly dusted pillows of goodness and continue the process with the rest of the dough. Once you've chopped up the gnocchi into pieces, they can be cooked straight away. But to add a little variety to your gnocchi, you can shape them by using a fork. To shape the gnocchi, Use your thumb to lightly press and roll the pillow across the fork. 
This will add little ridges to your gnocchi as well as create a crevice which will capture any sauce or flavor that you might pair these with later. I'm going to finish my gnocchi by lightly pan frying them with some sage and some garlic. Place a pan on a medium heat and drizzle in a generous amount of extra virgin olive oil. Now let's throw in some roughly chopped sage and garlic. Take the shaped gnocchi and toss them in the boiling water that we prepared earlier and wait till they rise. They should only take about 10 to 15 seconds. Now with a slotted spoon, remove the gnocchi. Drain them thoroughly and carefully place them in the pan with the sage and garlic. There will be some splattering so just be super careful as you place them into the pan. Toss the gnocchi in the pan making sure every little bit soaks up some of that beautiful sage and garlic goodness. When the gnocchi develops some crispy brown edges, hit it with a sprinkle of salt and some cracked black pepper. Give it one final toss before plating up. Carefully dish out your crispy gnocchi pillows on a warm plate, making sure to get some of those beautiful toasted sage and garlic bits right throughout your portion. Then, to finish the gnocchi, we're going to add some generous strokes of grana pandano cheese. I prefer using this over parmesan as it's a softer, more delicate flavored cheese that won't overpower the dish. I like to add a little squeeze of a lovely fresh lemon just to cut through the richness of the dish. And there you have it. Beautiful, handmade, crispy pillows of potato goodness. Make sure you give this recipe a try. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little food adventure. As always, I will be creating more videos in the weeks to come. So if you'd like to see more of me in my kitchen just cooking stuff, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks again for watching All Things Food and I will see you next time.